Hey there, this week we're going to talk about mostly the integumentary system, which is primarily the skin as well as the accessory structures of the skin. Um, I want to start with, however, tissue membranes first. So tissue membranes are bordering on the bridge between a tissue and an organ. Tissue membranes all have more than one tissue put together. So I want to start there. Cutaneous membrane is one type of, of a tissue membrane. That's the skin. So those will fit together nicely. I'm going to share my screen with you here. I want to start right now going into tissue membranes. So first to put this into context, remember that our body is compartmentalized. We've got these different organized compartments at various levels. So ignore that learning check for now. What I wanna do first is remind you of the compartments and then compartments are all separated by membranes. Cell membranes are one type of this. The other type are these tissue membranes. And we did learn these briefly when we talked about cavities. Um, that first week we mentioned that these are separated by membranes. So here's an example of a, um, a membrane. This would be a serous membrane and it's surrounding the heart. So it's kind of separating the heart from the rest of the thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity has its own membrane as well. that's not pictured here. I wanna put this into context. You can see the levels of organization. So this is not to scale, but this would be a zoomed in cross section of this tissue membrane. Tissue membranes have many cells and also two different tissue types. So loose connective tissue, areolar, as well as epithelial layer. This is the membrane that surrounds the heart. It is not a cell membrane. Each of these cells has a cell membrane. So if you zoom into the cell here, whoop, this is a cell, nucleus, the side of that cell, if you zoom into to there, that's gonna be our plasma membrane or cell membrane that's made up of phospholipids. So phospholipid bilayers can create cell membranes along with the proteins and cholesterols in there. Um, tissue membranes are made up of multiple cells with different scale. You could see a tissue membrane by eye. You can't see a cell membrane without a microscope. So quick learning check. What is the divider between the ECF and the ICF? Cell membrane, right? Or plasma membrane. That's what divides the extracellular fluid from the intracellular fluid. And I want you to know those abbreviations. Okay, so let's talk about the types of membranes. A lot of, pic a lot of pictures here. This is all you've seen before, these different compartments um, that, are, that are cavities. So we've got the cranial cavity, vertebral, thoracic, abdominal, and then some of these are divided further, um, the abdominal and the pelvic. And then within the thoracic, there's also the pericardium, um, pericardial cavity, and, and the, the pleural, um, the pleural cavity. So what makes these be separate compartments is the membranes that surround them. So the types of membranes are going to be listed here. Meninges surround the brain and spinal cord. We'll come back to the structure of those when we get to the nervous system. Not gonna talk about them now. But they create a separate compartment for the cranial and vertebral cavities. Synovial, also gonna come back to. Those are around synovial joints. So we'll talk about those when we get to joints. The last three are what I'm going to talk about today. So serous membranes, mucous membranes, and cutaneous membranes. Cutaneous is your skin. So that one will be in a separate little video. These first two right now, I'm going to cover more briefly than, than the cutaneous. So mucous membrane, also called mucosa. So you'll see in your book, the mucosal layer, that's referring to the mucous membrane. Um, this is located in everywhere that lines the body cavities that is open to the outside. What do I mean by that? I mean all these passageways here, your nasal cavity, um, your respiratory passageways, your oral passageways, lungs, stomach, and the rest of your digestive system, um, as well as urinaries like your urethra, is all considered technically outside of the body. Think about it, when you eat food, you eat a cupcake, 
that passes through a big old tube in your body. You absorb nutrients from that. Those nutrients become part of your body. The rest of that cupcake is, goes into the toilet. Some foods are digested better than others, right? Um, corn kernels are ones that pass right through. They never become part of your body. So thinking about that can help understand mucous membranes. They're always lining a surface that is, um, where there's a lumen next to it that's exposed that's the outside of the body. So it's going to be in um, always contain epithelial tissue. So here's two examples. The trachea, you've seen this. We saw this in lab twice now. Um, this is the lumen of the trachea. And you know now the trachea is lined with pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Um, it's ciliated, so that's what's shown here. That single layer that looks all hodgepodgey is the, the epithelium that's present in the trachea. That epithelium, along with the areolar tissue that's underneath it, so connective tissue right underneath it, connected by a basement membrane, those two layers make up your mucous membrane. Doesn't always have to be sort of stratified columnar epithelium, any type of epithelial layer. Not all types, but can be various types. Um, often it's a single layer. So in this case, your mucous membrane is this layer right here, so to stratify columnar epithelium and the lamina propria, which is made up of areolar loose connective tissue that provides blood supply to the avascular epithelium. Epithelium itself is, doesn't have a blood supply. Um, here's another example here. This would be in the stomach, looks fairly similar in the intestines, where you have this simple columnar epithelium, single layer of columnar cells with a lamina propria underneath them. These two together, and here because of these villi, the lamina propria kind of has the, follows the villi as well. This entire region right here is your mucous membrane. Mucous membranes also have, often have goblet cells, which I'll come back to with glands. Um, you, you've seen them in lab as well. Those are mucus producing cells. So mucous membranes often produce mucus um, as part of their function for lubrication in the, the trachea, um, and in the intestines as well. So these mucous membranes are often important for, are always important for absorption or secretion or both. So a great example of that is your stomach. Intestines is actually where most of the nutrient absorption occurs um, across this epithelial layer. Absorption, I'm sorry, secretion also of like digestive enzymes is also important so that the food can be broken down and then absorbed. All right, so those are mucous membranes and you'll see them a lot in the book. Like when you look at a diagram of the trachea, you'll see those, those layers, that layer that's labeled the mucosa. Think about what that means. Epithelial layer plus the areolar connective tissue. Note below the mucosal membrane is the submucosa. Okay, serous membranes, the, sec the last type I'll talk about right here. Um, these line body cavities that are closed to the exterior, so opposed to internal linings, opposed to lumens, these ones more are more enclosing, so closed up to the exterior. These are the ones that have the two layers, the visceral and parietal layer. So an analogy of this is for how these are created is, think of this, look at this heart. It looks like it's like a fist punching into a balloon. Um, the purpose of these membranes is actually to minimize friction. Um, they're really thin and they've got a small space in between. Your heart is constantly beating. Your lungs are constantly expanding and relaxing. That would create a lot of friction if you didn't have some sort of barrier. Um, so these three examples here, one is the peritoneum, one is the... Um, pericardium, zoomed in here, and one is the pleura. Those three are serous membranes that are all composed of these two layers. You drew this in lab week one. The visceral layer is closest to the organ. Um, so the visceral pericardium would be surrounding the heart on the inside. The parietal pericardium is that outer layer very thin and in between them there's a small space that has fluid in it that it, that fluid helps to um, help with minimizing friction. 
This tissue is very thin. It's made up of simple squamous epithelium. So these are single epithelial cells that are very short, squat, and a thin layer of areolar tissue underneath it. So just like our mucous membrane, there's epithelium plus areolar. However, this is always simple squamous. So it's, it's not gonna act as um, like secretion and absorption. It's more a, just a thin barrier. And then because of this design, the visceral and parietal layer, we've got the fluid in between to help kind of shock absorb and minimize friction. Okay, 